cataractcoach.com hand positioning and simultaneous microscope view with picture in picture, and this time sitting superiorly, so superior incision. We're sitting at the head of the table. This is a patient who has with the rule of stigmatism, so we're gonna make our incision there at the superior 12 o'clock position. So what you see in the right upper right corner is the surgeon's view. We're starting off making a paracentesis there for the left hand. And this is a good example of how to hold your hands during surgery. Again, left hand now is holding the cannula tip like a pencil, right hand's on the plunger, and we can inject anesthetic, even going under the iris to put a little more inside the eye. This patient takes Flomax and has a pupil that may come down during surgery. Again, for the viscoelastic, left hand holding the cannula tip, right hand on the plunger, and again, the instruments are held like pencils. Left hand pencil, and if I'm holding it in the right hand primarily, right hand pencil. Now fixation ring in the left hand, and in the right hand we now have our keratome. So we're gonna make that superior incision right there about 12 o'clock, and the uh, eye's already been marked. And we wanna have an incision that's not too long. I definitely want to have the astigmatic flattening at that meridian. In fact, you'll see at the end of this case, we'll make a paired incision, full thickness, opposite that at six o'clock. So capsorexis forceps going in the eye, we're gonna tear around capsorexis here. And look outside the eye at the hand. So the right hand is doing all the work and you see the pivoting to float within the incision. The left hand is just providing some support there and in this step doesn't need to be used. If the patient had difficulty with fixation, we could use the left hand to help stabilize the eye, such as by hooking the paracentesis with a second instrument. Now for balanced salt solution to, for the hydrodissection. Again, the left hand holding the tip of the instrument. We wanna hold the cannula tip so make sure it doesn't fly off inadvertently. And the right hand on the plunger and look at the pivoting to go different meridians. Make sure we get that nice fluid wave. So we'll try again. And we'll do plenty of hydrodissection to really free up this nucleus. Now in this case, it's not too dense of a nucleus. And so we here will prolapse it out of the bag, particularly in cases that uh, have Flomax or IFIS, floppy iris. It's helpful to get the nucleus partway out of the capsule bag. Now more dispersive viscoelastic to protect that central corneal endothelium. Chopper going in the left hand, being held like a pencil. Phaco probe in the right hand, adjusting the phaco tip. There it is. And now we put our instruments in the eye. So again, both hands are holding instruments like pencils. Buzzing with the phaco probe here, we get a quick chop at the beginning and break the nucleus in two halves. And now we can just emulsify each half. Not a very dense nucleus, so it's relatively easier to do. Look at the position of the phaco probe. It's almost parallel to the floor of the room. So it's not held at too steep of an angle. You wanna hold it just the same plane as the phaco incision. And notice how we pivot inside the eye, keeping the eye in primary and outside the eye, there's more pivoting than you may imagine. Also looking at the hands, look at the right hand, how the cords, infusion tube, outflow, and then the electric cord for the phaco handpiece are all draped over the wrist so they don't come in the surgical field at all. Last little bit of nucleus being removed here and chopper in a protective position. Again, look at the hand position each hand like a pencil. Now coming out of the eye, that looks pretty good. One last little piece here of nucleus. You can use the chopper and the phaco probe just to aspirate that slowly. Again, the chopper's in the protective position. So look at the hands, both hands resting on the patient's head or face, and their pinky and ring finger are the ones that are doing the resting. That looks good. As you can see, the pupil has come down more in this case, so good thing that we brought the nucleus up out of the capsule bag. Here's the eye probe going inside there, adjusting the tip a little bit. You see my technician also getting rid of the phaco probe, untangling it there, and removing our cortex. At this point, the technician's loading up our IOL. In the left hand, I have the chopper and spatula in order to uh, use them if I need to, such as to bring down or uh, push in a piece of epinucleus. Capsule bag's pretty clean here. We'll put in our cohesive viscoelastic. Again, a little bit of a lens material in the anterior chamber. That'll all be removed at the very end. Here comes the IOL. Chopper now being used to fixate the eye via the presentesis. And then the right hand, again, holding the plunger here, delivering the lens. And now, if we want to, if you're a very right hand dominant, you can switch over, 
put the chopper in the right hand and just use that to position the lens, ensure that it's in good placement and that both haptics open up and unfold completely. That looks great. And now time for removal of the viscoelastic. So in some patients like this patient, there's a benefit of making an incision superiorly. With the rule in this case, the patient has astigmatism there. I'm gonna make a second incision, watch this. Holding down with the fixation ring, making a second incision opposite the first one to have even a little more flattening at that meridian. This is, again, to just address astigmatism. We're not gonna use that incision. This patient only has about 0.75, maybe one diopter of astigmatism with the rule. And our goal is to reduce that to maybe a quarter diopter or so. Going underneath the IOL to remove the viscoelastic. Again, you see on the inferior limbus there, a little bit of bleeding from the limbal vessels. Again, that's ideal. That's how we like to make our incisions. We want them to be just slightly vascular, barely nicking limbal vessels. We don't want a totally avascular incision. And look how we pivot around. There's a lot of movement of the instrument outside the eye, but relatively little movement in the eye. The pivot point is, of course, the incision. So keeping the eye in primary during this procedure and using the pivoting of the hand. All about the pivot. And now it's time to seal up our incisions. If a patient has a very prominent brow or deep set eyes, sometimes this uh, position sitting superiorly becomes difficult, hard to access that superior limbal um, area. In general, I dem definitely prefer a temporal incision for most patients. And again, most patients have against the rule of stigmatism that are of cataract age. That's a more common um, type of astigmatism with age. In some patients, like this patient who has more myopia, it's a little more common to have with the rule, so steep at about 90. And I'm going to seal up the opposite incision as well. Remember, there are two main incisions now because uh, we want to decrease the astigmatism more. That looks good. And then our last step here is to seal up our incisions. We're going to do a little squirt around the anterior chamber. Look how the left hand holds it like a pencil the right hand of the plunger, and look at the amount of pivoting in order to sweep that angle. I want to make sure there's no viscoelastic stuck in that angle. We've talked about the angle sweep maneuver previously, and that works great. So finally, seal up our incision here, get the eye to physiologic pressure. Here's a wet cell sponge soaked in tetracaine, and then here's a dry one, and let's make sure the incisions are sealed. Everything looks great. So hope you enjoyed this video. Again, an, a different view. We've previously showed the same type of video from a temporal approach. And this is now from a superior approach. Again, the end here, we'll make sure everything is just as we desire, nice and dry. And now we're ready to take off the drapes and call this a case. Thanks for watching. I sincerely appreciate it.